A lot of people often ask how I disinfect things like soils or sticks or logs and different things you find outside that you want to use in your reptile enclosures. So today I'm going to be showing you what I actually do to make sure that the things are pest free and germ free and don't have any bacteria or anything that can harm your animal. But first we're going to have to find some stuff to disinfect. Forgot my glasses, I can't see anything but I guess I should at least be able to spot a stick. I can't stop stepping on stuff, I don't have shoes either. Ow. 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 Spiders. Oh boy. No thank you. Spiders are cool from a distance. It's cool that they do stuff for the environment, but I don't want them on my feet. Okay, there's a stick here. I'll just take this one. Now before we even clean these, keep in mind it's going to be best if you just buy things that are already reptile safe because there's no 100% guarantee that we're gonna get everything off with the processes I'm gonna use today. Also keep in mind where you're actually getting stuff from, like, I don't know, maybe there's a, an area that you know there tend to be termites. So maybe avoid that area. Maybe there's a spot that looks a bit more contaminated or with a bit more bacteria than others. So try and just choose your different sticks or soils or whatever while trying to be logical and follow what appears to be safest. Now at first I was gonna go with this one. It's the one without the bark but there is mold and fungus growing on it. So I'm gonna avoid this because I don't want anything else to spread or grow even though we are gonna clean it. Okay, it's the next day now uh, and it's getting kind of dark so hopefully I can get this done. Now I'm just gonna collect some soil from this area I found in my front yard so I can show you how to disinfect that along with the stick. I don't know where our shovels are, so I'm going in by hand. So depending on the animal, you might wanna think of what type of soil you're getting. Uh, the part of North Carolina I'm in is just filled with so much clay, so I'm trying to avoid the clay and go more for the earthy soil. Keep in mind, again, that we are outside. Uh, there's no guarantee as to what is in this, whether there's different pieces of trash or plastic. I've had to pull a couple pieces out already, and there could always be different remnants of certain plants in that. So try and mind the actual plants that are in the area to make sure you're avoiding things that might be poisonous or dangerous to your animal. Also, things like sand should be avoided because of impaction and things even just like rocks could cause some problems whether they're sharp or whether your animal tries to eat them. So really try and dig through and make sure you're only getting the most pure soil I guess you could say. So I'm gonna ask that you ignore the mess of the room right now because I'm starting to pack stuff up for the move. But with me I have the stick. I just picked one stick for convenience and a small bag of soil. I probably need more if I was actually doing some sort of build with it. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about the first process that some people use for the sticks. This is not something I've done, but it, it does work if you want to try it. Uh, basically, that is to take the stick and create a mix of bleach and water. So, of course, bleach is a cleaning solution, and at the same time, it's basically poisonous. Uh, so, it will kill anything on there, and then help clean a ton of that bacteria off. You'll probably want to give it a nice scrub, too, just to get any physical dirt off. But that's a pretty good way to get a lot of those germs off. So you can do that, or what I'm going to do, or you can do both of them to be even extra safe. Uh, what I'm going to do first, though, is this just has different bits of soil and maybe some little bits of fungus that I don't want on there. Uh, it's even just crumbling off right now. And in front of me here, I have a container of just plain tap water. doesn't really matter. And then right here, I have dish soap. The first thing I'm going to do is just take a sponge. This is just a usual abrasive sponge you can kind of use whatever and I'm just going to scrub it a bit you can already see a lot of stuff is coming off and I'll use some dish soap in just a minute but I'll just do a quick, uh, basic scrub and I'll see just how much comes off now whether you want to leave the bark on or not is pretty much up to you it might be easier without the bark to really get it clean but I'll just kind of leave some parts on here I'm going to go ahead and dip my sponge in the soap so after a few minutes of real good scrubbing, I'm just going to kind of rinse it all off, make sure I've covered every part I can. And you can see this water is pretty dirty, so quite a bit came off, and this is just one small stick. Now I'm going to put even more soap in this water, and I'm actually just going to let it sit here for a good few minutes. Now we're going to use the oven soon, so to make that oven process even better, you can let this stick soak in the water for probably a few days. That would really be best because that will really get it damp down to the core. And we'll talk about why that will help in a minute. But even if you don't, you probably wanna let it sit in here for at least a few hours to have a good soak in the soap or the bleach if you decide to do a bleach mix. So a few hours or days later, depending on how long you decided, the stick has been soaking in water. I went ahead and took it out. I did a little quick scrub just with the water and rinsed it off to get the soap off. 
And then here's what we got. You're probably gonna have more than one stick if you're doing this. And I still have the soil, which I have not done anything with. From here, we're gonna go to the oven and get it up to a pretty high temperature. You want the temperature to get to something that can kill the bacteria. So chances are this isn't gonna just burst into flames, uh, especially if it's soaked really well, which is the first reason you would like to get it nice and soaked to make sure it's gonna be a lot less dangerous. But while you're doing this, you're still gonna wanna supervise the oven a lot um, because it's you're dealing with high temperatures and you wanna be careful. Usually I think soil is going to already be a bit damp, it's possible you might even add some water. It might not matter too much. But the next thing we're gonna, gonna do is once the oven is nice and hot, we're gonna put both of these on some sort of oven safe pan or some sort of oven safe, oven safe container that they can sit in. And then once that's there, you can pop it in the oven and then leave it there. I would try to check back, I don't know, at least every half hour to hour or something, but we're gonna let it stay in this oven for a long time. Ideally, if your stick had been soaking for say a few days, you're gonna wanna leave it in there until it's completely dry. One of the reasons you wanna soak it really well is when that water gets really hot, it's essentially gonna start boiling kind of the inside of the stick. Those super high temperatures along with that basically boiling water is gonna help kill a lot more parasites that may be living in this, along with the bacteria. And now that I think of it, you could probably just boil the stick itself in say a pot or pan, but I choose to do the oven. And then however much soil you're doing is going onto that same pan, I try to spread it out as much as possible so that uh, every little amount can get as hot as possible and this baking will just help bake away a lot of those dangers in that soil. Again, make sure you look for things that could be dangerous to your reptiles, whether it's litter that got in the soil or certain types of plants that might even be dangerous or things like rocks or sand or other things that could cause impaction or hurt your animal if it tries to eat those things. And then after hours of sitting in the oven, or after some boiling, if you decide to do that with your sticks or logs, you can go ahead and remove them. Obviously they're gonna be hot, so you're probably gonna to wanna to let them sit for quite a while. And that should be just about it. I would avoid putting these things into your enclosure until they are to room temperature to make sure your animal doesn't get hurt on any sort of hot parts on these things. And again, just physically looking at this and trying to see, make sure you do not miss anything. Make sure you don't see any bugs or other things that you think might be dangerous because of course your animal's health should come first when doing this. And like I've said, it is best to just go out and buy reptile or amphibian or other animal safe products. But if you did find something really cool that you want to use in an enclosure, or if you just want to save some money or, I don't know, make something that looks like it's straight out of your ecosystem, then maybe this is something you want to do. So it's not 100% guarantee that it's safe but these processes will really help you out and make sure everything you're doing with your animals will be safe and they'll be out of harm's way. So I'm sure a lot of people just immediately put these things in their enclosure without doing anything, and most of the time they're probably gonna be fine, but there are reasons that animals have much longer lifespans in captivity. That's because you can remove a ton of those dangers, including, in this case, bacteria and parasites and other things. If you know of any processes other than the bleach, the oven, the scrubbing, uh, or the boiling, make sure to let me and others know in the comments. Well, that'll be it for this video, so I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.